What's up everybody, Gen X Dividend Investor here. Today was a red day in the market and my portfolio fell over $50,000 from where it was the previous day. My thumbnail shows what my dividend portfolio looked like at market close today, which was a sea of red and one green spot, which is everyone's favorite rate, Realty Income, which said F you to Mr. Market, I'm going to have a green day. Realty Income has been holding up decently in this pandemic and the market rewarded it today. You can see why it's a dividend growth investor's favorite and why I always preach quality over high yield. So my dividend portfolio total value fell down to where it is now at 1.71 million US dollars. But it could fall a lot more than that and I'd still be up even from the point where I sold out of all my positions a couple years ago and then bought back in right after I sold out. If that makes no sense why someone would sell out of their entire portfolio only to turn around and buy back in, then watch my video called the time I sold all my stocks to understand why I did that. So that $50,000 drop means my dividend portfolio lost 2.87% today. For reference, the S&P 500 was down 3.51% today, so my portfolio's average weighted beta of 0.78 did what it's supposed to do, which means it fell less than the market did. For reference, my growth portfolio fell over 5% today, so it also did what I'd expect it to do due to its beta. So a common discussion I have with my friends is if you should pull out of the markets, because the market has been hot for so long and we haven't had a mega crash, and the pandemic could very well be the cause of the dominoes to start falling. Each person needs to make that very important and individual decision for themselves in terms of what they're going to do with their portfolio. First let me state, never listen to someone on YouTube and then blindly follow their financial thoughts. Always do your own research and do what you think makes sense for yourself. I'm going to tell you why I'm not selling out of my positions right now. You can watch my video called When to Sell a Stock where I elaborate on a bunch of reasons why I would sell. So I want to talk about market timing. I'm not a professional investor, I'm just a guy who's been investing for over 25 years. And I'll give you an example of how often I'm wrong. In 2015, I felt the market had been too hot for too long. I remember having discussions with my friends about that. One friend of mine pulled his entire portfolio out of the market, but the market kept running. Again, in 2016, it felt even hotter, and I had similar discussions. I seriously contemplated pulling out of the market, but I didn't, and the market kept running. Investors are made in down markets, in my opinion, not up markets. Everyone is a winner in up markets. When everything is smooth sailing, everyone is happy. Real investors are those who go through hard times and don't give up. Those are the ones that succeed over the long run. So one day down is nothing. Imagine if we had two months of these days. Having your portfolio be at 50% of a previous peak is what has happened to me twice now, the first being in the dot-com crash and the second being in 2008, and each time I saw people give up on investing. So this little blip we had today is just that, a blip. Could we fall 80% from here? Yep, and you need to be mentally and financially prepared for that possibility. Will I sell? I don't plan on it. Is the world in the riskiest state I've ever been aware of in my lifetime? Yes. Would I fault someone for pulling out of the market? Not at all. So why would I possibly stay in? Why don't I just sell it all, sit on cash and wait? Well, I like to learn from people who are more experienced than me. That doesn't mean I do what they do, but I like to listen, reflect, and then chart my own course. So let me tell you what some fairly well-known investors and institutions have said about trying to time the markets. I saw some of these on a CBS News article. So the first comes from Peter Lynch, who was a manager of the Magellan Fund at Fidelity from 1977 to 1990 and averaged, get this, a 29.2% annual return. He said, far more money has been lost by investors preparing for corrections or trying to anticipate corrections than has been lost in corrections themselves. So that is a very powerful statement and it reminds me of my best friend I went to college with and who lives in another state now but whom I talk to daily. He pulled everything out of the market because of the pandemic and now he's sitting on the sidelines wondering what he should do. He's been FOMOing a lot, but has tried to time the markets. He wants to wait until it crashes and then jump back in. Will he make the right call? Maybe a better question is, will he get lucky and be right this time? That reminds me of another Lynch quote which is relevant, which is, I can't recall ever once having seen the name of a market timer on Forbes' annual list of the richest people in the world. If it were truly possible to predict corrections, you'd think somebody would have made billions by doing it. I'm fond of using that statement whenever I meet someone who's a newer investor and who's trying to assure me that they know what the market's going to do. If anyone could consistently predict the market, there would be a trillionaire. Anyone can make a guess and be right now and then, but no one in history has managed to do it repeatedly. That's actually similar to something David Babson said, who founded a firm which handled billions in private investments, and even though he had a great track record of predicting things, he said, It must be apparent to intelligent investors that if anyone possessed the ability to forecast the immediate trend of stock prices consistently and accurately, he would become a billionaire so quickly he would not find it necessary to sell his stock market guesses to the general public. Who else would I like to listen to? Well, Mark Reap, a senior vice president at the Schwab Center for Financial Research, who said, Market timing is impossible to perfect. What has Jonathan Clements, who is a veteran financial journalist who spent 20 years on the Wall Street Journal and has written several books about investing and personal finance, said? What to do when the market goes down? Read the opinions of the investment gurus who are quoted in the Wall Street Journal, and as you read, laugh. 
We all know that the pundits can't predict short-term market movements, yet there they are, desperately trying to sound intelligent when they really haven't got a clue. What has Charles Ellis said, who is an investment consultant who founded Greenwich Associates, an international strategy consulting firm focused on financial institutions, who is known for his philosophy of passive investing through index funds, is detailed in his book Winning the Losers Game. He said, market timing is unappealing to long-term investors. As in hunting deer or fishing for rainbow trout, investors have learned the importance of being there and using patient persistence, so they are there when opportunity knocks. What has the Wall Street Journal said? A decade of results throws cold water on the notion that strategists exhibit any special ability to time the markets. How about financial publications? They said, let's say it clearly, no one knows where the market is going, experts or novices, soothsayers or astrologers, that's the simple truth. What about one of the greatest investors of all time, Warren Buffett? He said the following, Our stay-put behavior reflects our view that the stock market serves as a relocation center at which money is moved from the active to the patient. He also said, We continue to make more money when snoring than when active. And he said, The only value of stock forecasters is to make fortune tellers look good. And finally, my favorite time frame is forever. All of those quotes speak to the beliefs of buying and holding, ideally forever, and how patience is so key and the subtext is that you don't try to time the markets. You hold quality and you keep holding it and keep holding it. That doesn't mean Warren never sells. It just means he has a very strong propensity to hold for a long time. So a goal for my channel is to show you the good, bad, and the ugly of a decently sized dividend portfolio to help you prepare for your future from a mental perspective for what can happen. I urge you not to compare yourself to me or any other investor, only yourself. All that matters is that you are taking actions today to better yourself for tomorrow. My portfolio is 100% immaterial to yours. Now, while overall I've seen the market trend up for decades, there are periods, some of which can last for years, when things don't trend up. And the reality is you won't always find people being fully transparent of their mistakes or when their investments take a beating. Of course, there have been people who have gotten lucky and timed things once or twice, like Bernard Baruch, who made millions in the stock market in the early 1900s and got lucky by predicting the Wall Street crash as early as 1927. This guy had partners like Guggenheim, Rockefeller, and Peabody in the early 1900s and had the reputation of being the lone wolf of Wall Street because of his refusal to join any of the big financial houses. But even he said that only liars manage to always be out during bad times and in during good times. What does that mean? It means that if someone tells you that they've only made good calls in investing, they're probably lying or have just started investing. And that reminds me of what Jason Zweig said. Jason wrote for the Wall Street Journal, wrote many books on investing, and he was the editor of the revised edition of the famous Benjamin Graham book called The Intelligent Investor, of which I have an affiliate link in the description of this video, and which is the classic text that Warren Buffett describes as by far the best book about investing ever written. As an Amazon associate, I earned from qualifying purchases. So what did Jason Z say? He said, Whenever some analyst seems to know what he's talking about, remember that pigs will fly before he'll ever release a full list of his past forecasts, including the bloopers. So remember that when someone is trying to convince you that they somehow can guarantee to make you money or they think they can guarantee you what the future will bring. Hopefully now you can better understand why I'm not selling, even though my portfolio fell $50,000 today and I'm worried that this pandemic could crash the markets and thus my portfolio. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Leave me a comment if you did, I'd really appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time and energy for me to create, so liking my video is a simple way you can thank me. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and consider checking out my Patreon page or my affiliate links in the description of this video. And definitely check out my Dividend Discord server, which now has over 4,500 investors on it and is growing quickly. Join today and be counted as one of the OGs who joined in the first year of its existence. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and click the bell notification. Thanks for watching, and I'll chat with you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor, and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.